<laughs> Back in old League of Legends, do you see the chat there? Do you see the chat that's behind the bear? Mid, mid, jungle, uh, bot. Exploring old League of Legends, 13 years old. Old League of Legends. Back when Riot Games was an actual small indie company, League of Legends has been one of the biggest games in the world for almost a decade plus now. The one thing I realized after talking to my friends is that everyone started their league journey at a different time, and I know someone who started as early as season one. It's me! I'm <laughs> But a lot of my friends didn't start until way after season five. For reference, Echo wasn't released until reference, season I don't know Jin Echo, I don't know Jin, six, I don't know Kai'Sa. Kaisa. Most popular champions, and she wasn't released until season eight. And in this series, guys, I want to go back in time to old League of Legends to show you guys I, how I really it was want Penny nostalgia, if guys. Never played it before, or if you've been an OG in the past. Hopefully, they give you guys a good feel of how League of Legends I, was I want the nostalgia. and how it was like to play League of Legends back in the day. And there's no better place to start than when I started League of Legends, and that's that's all the way back in season two. So strap in and let's go back. Welcome to November Welcome. 2011. To the season two just dropped for League, and also the president is currently black. And oh yeah, didn't people think the world was going to end at the end of 2012 because yeah. some ancient civilization ran out of space on the calendar? That's crazy. And back in 2011, I was just starting high school when my friend put me on to a little game called League of Legends. And at the time, I didn't really like it. I'm not going to lie. It looked kind of ass to me. Nah, dude. League of Legends actually looked good in comparison to other games. Not going to lie. Uh, the only game that looked kind of... No, I was about to say World of Warcraft, but no, World of Warcraft was not good, looking good. I don't know. I don't know. For me, League of Legends was nice. No, no, no. No, not, not, not you, Seamus. Ah, poo. Keep in mind, I was a Call of Duty player. I was used to just fucking 360 no-scoping and doing crazy shit. Why the fuck would I want to move oh little God. guys on a screen? But later as i got more and more used to the game i started oh, falling in love with the game and my first season that i experienced in its entirety was season two pranked q now oh dude start this off the oh this screen man oh shit the nostalgia kick in between old league of legends and new league of legends let's start off with the most important cue in my opinion and that is ranked now the one thing i don't miss about old league of legends is their rank queue the rank queue was extremely flawed uh now these days you guys are able to queue up for the role that you want back yeah. in old league of legends <laughs> back in old league of legends do you see the chat there do you see the chat that's behind the bear you go in and it's a chaos everyone is like mid mid jungle uh bot and there's always someone who is rubbed the wrong way you didn't get that luxury back in old league of legends we use draft queue and what that means is that essentially depending on what pick you get will determine what role you're going so let's say for instance if you are last pick you get no rights <laughs> yeah you are forced to fill for whatever role that your team doesn't want to play and of course it doesn't seem fair now these days to be forced to be autofilled but everybody was forced to do this everybody had to go through this terrible system and i feel yep. like that's the main reason why i play every single role because i was literally forced to play every <laughs> single role in the earlier seasons of league of legends and also another thing uh if you got first pick you control every single one of your team's bands all three and of course the proper etiquette was to type to your first pick of uh champions that you wanted to ban but for the most part the first pick could do whatever the fuck they we want they can ban teemo they can ban Heimerdinger, they can ban whatever the <laughs> fuck they wanted they can ban all top lane matchups if they wanted to play top you had no control and you had no say and it wasn't absolutely barbaric uh most people did respect if you typed your role in the chat first they would usually give you your role however at the end of the day if i had a pick above you and i op dot gg you and you had actually it wasn't even op dot gg Dude, there was not even OPGG back in the day. Back in the day, it was Lol King. If I Lol King, oh shit, Lol King, man. King you, and you had a worse win rate than me. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you type. I'm locking in my champion, and I'll play the game. Oh, when I started this video, I didn't even know how many champions were in League of Legends currently. There's currently 169, including the newest edition, Aurora. But she just got released on live servers.
Dude, I remember the times when there were 100. Releasing 100 champion Jace. Oh, dude, and that was way after I started playing League of Legends. As I'm recording this video, back when Season 2 started, there was only 87 champions in the game. And back in the day, between like Season 1 to Season 2, Riot was just pumped. Wait, 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 wait. The game started with 40 champions. These are the original ones. And Rise is not even in the original 40 champions. Did you guys know that? Being out champion after champion. In season two alone, they released 19 champions. And we're about to go over each one of those 19 champions in this video uh, in order, starting with number one. Volley bear. Now, old volley bear was a little bit different than the new volley bear that we have. Uh, his old Q used to flip people over his head. Uh, yeah. His W is pretty much the same. I mean, he was OP as well. <laughs> his E was like a little bit of like a knockback. It wasn't very good as I remember, but if you went full AP, you could do some extreme damage. And then his ultimate was the classic Thunderclaws. Uh, you used to be able to shred through people with that ulti. Yeah. And of course, I can't forget his passive, which would give oh, him healing HP back after volley bear is released we have ari besides a visual upgrade ari is pretty much the after same volley exact bear? kit her ultimate got a ultimate reset recently but other than that she's pretty much the same champion and then after ari's release we got victor and oh for victor, victor. He has oh really victor when victor was released it was actually the first champion that i was ready to buy right off the bat i was having enough ip points and I was I was ready to just buy whatever the champion is. It was only teased what was the champion. I was kind of torn apart because I liked Victor, but I think I liked Victor because I was kind of in the mindset that whatever champion comes out, I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna like it. But I'm not sure if I liked it back in the day when it was released really changed in terms of his kit but his augments and the way he's able to evolve his abilities have changed drastically over time uh the only thing i really noticed especially back in the day is that his alt was actually kind of scary looking and before we begin the next section only about two percent of you guys are subscribed to this channel sure. if you guys like content like this and want me to do even more please subscribe to this channel we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers let's get to the next part and after victor we have such Sejuani. and for Sejuani's kit it's very similar to what we have live however her old W used to swing her fucking flail in the air like a stripper <laughs> and for her E it wasn't even a stun it was a slow so if you autoed somebody and then used your E after it would slow them it did a lot more damage yeah only the ultimate stun, stuns so it was kind of kind of ass after sejuani's release we got ziggs and ziggs. ziggs has the same exact kit as he does i was right playing mid back in the day mid was my main thing at, at some point i realized that i really suck at the game and i went support because it was easier did i suck at support i don't think so i think i was above average right now besides his w being able to destroy towers very easily but uh, mid, mid was always a role that i really wanted to play i even played in one tournament i played in a couple of tournaments but one one v one tournament and it was uh, I matched up with some really good mid laner and I managed to beat him up and he was like please let me go to the other round and I was like okay go to the other round and he ended up uh, winning the whole thing and uh, now we are we, now we are friends after Ziggs, we got Nautilus, and Nautilus has the same exact kit down to the minute detail. Of course, he's been buffed and nerfed, but the kit itself hasn't changed. I mean, and Nautilus is a Nautilus, good champion. After Nautilus, we have Fiora. Oh, and for Fiora. Fiora was the the other champion that i was ready to buy instantly when she came out i, I was ready it was teased and i was ready to just lock in Fiora, she's vast but she was a top laner like different now than she was back in the day uh she was even more brain dead if you guys can actually believe that her q was point and click her ultimate was point and click uh, yeah. her e was pretty much the exact same she was thing very that she strong. does have now she and was the very ultimate Blade Waltz is the same Blade Waltz that you guys see in Arena now these days. Uh, her W was possibly the worst ability in the game by far because it was basically like a Jax E that only worked on one auto and on top of that, it didn't even stun. The only thing it would do is that it would give you extra movement speed, extra attack speed, and it'll prevent you from gaining damage from that particular auto attack. So it would be good against like a NASA's Q, but other than that, it's fucking useless. And then after Fiora, we got Lulu. 
And oh, Lolo. I think this was the moment that I started phasing into support. Dust Lady is pretty much the exact same because I really as like she is Lulu. now on live servers. And then after Lulu, we got Hecarim. Hecarim oh, is the Hecarim. exact same as well. Uh, then after Hecarim, we got Darius. And for Darius, he... Oh, Darius was so hype with the dunking. Oh, my get goodness. Changed. Uh, old Darius used to have an instant Q cast time, but it didn't heal him for the extra champions that he hit. And then also, his... His E used to be able to pull people a lot faster than it currently does. And also his passive was just a really strong bleed. It didn't give him that insane amount of AD when you get fully stacked up. And then right after Darius, we got his brother Draven, Mr. Yeah. Axe Boy, and his kid. <laughs> this is Draven, man. <laughs> it's pretty much the exact same as it is right now. But the main difference is that his Draven back in the day when it was released was considered a hard champion. I don't know what is the situation now, but back in the day it was considered hard because you need to control both of the axes in order to be good. His old passive was insanely strong. His old passive used to give you insane bleed on every Q or critical attack. So especially late game, 102 damage on every single Q or crit really stacks up compared to the current Draven passive that we have on live servers. And then after Draven Raven, we got Jace, and Jace, Jace is the exact same champion as Jace is the right hundred champion. And then after Jace, Diana got released. And Di Diana, is Diana is the third champion that I I watched the teaser, watched the trailers, and I was ready to lock in directly when she was out. I really like Diana. I really like Diana. The aesthetic of Diana, the kit of Diana back it's in the day. Virtually the same exact champion. The main difference is that her old ultimate used to be her dash so she had to wait till level six to actually dash and then her old e got moved to her current ultimate for her old e did no damage it would just pull people to the center and slow them you know so for diana now she has a lot more burst uh old diana had a lot more dps and then after diana's release we got rengar and the funniest oh, thing with rengar is that he got reworked twice so after basically old rengar is very similar to current day rengar but he he also got reworked before where his key was AOE. Yeah, that was really weird, but old Rengar and current Rengar are pretty much the same. And then after Rengar, Riot Games was on one hell of a streak because they released Syndra. Ah, Syndra. Uh, she's really good at handling black balls. I wish she would. I wish she would handle my black balls, but. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, she's pretty much the exact same. And then after Syndra, we have Kha'Zix, who hasn't changed since season two. Uh, and he's a very popular, well designed I mean, champion. And then we have another champion. bug right after, which is Elise. And Elise hasn't Elise. really changed at all. Elise then, was another character that i was ready to just buy directly the very last champion right before season three was zed and for zed being one of the most popular champions now these days it's hard to believe that he wasn't released until near the end of season two uh and for zed he is the exact same kit the only difference i would say is that his ultimate used to be able to be qss but it wasn't very optimal because it was a magic resist item and those are the 19 champions that got released in season two and for season Season two, if you guys collect all the 19 champions, only seven of them have been reworked or changed in a major way. And then the other 12 haven't been changed practically at all, which is not bad for champions that got released about 12 to 13 years ago. Other game modes. Oh. Let's explain the other game modes that we had back in old League of oh, Legends. Starting Twisted off, of course, we had Summoner's Rift for normals as well as ranked. However, you guys should notice that we don't have a dedicated mode for ARAM. You guys had to create a custom lobby with your friends or other people to join. And also, we didn't even have the map for ARAM at the time. So we used Summoner's Rift and we would just hope that people <laughs> followed the rules. People and were not doing big. that. Sometimes really. people would troll. Go crazy! And for game modes that we actually had, we Oof. had Twisted Tree Line, which Twisted was a three three line. mode, and it got removed in late season nine oh. at the end of 2019. And I felt really bad when it got removed because this was the first game mode I ever played, and I actually grinded to level 30 using. Tw Dude, same. Me and my friends originally played only Twisted Tree Line. We rarely played Summoner's Rift and we enjoyed it so much and because we were only three. Oh my god, Twisted Tree Line. 
I love that map. Twisted tree line. Because I didn't like something. And this is, I think this is the original. After that, they reworked it. Probably 2013. It became a little bit of shit, but still it has its charm. And they removed it. Rip, I felt like the games were too long. Twisted tree line was perfect because I didn't have to worry about five other people. The only thing I had to worry about was my two teammates and the enemy team. And lastly, back in the day, we had dominion and this is a game dominion. a lot of people weren't here dude dude here for and i'm not gonna lie it wasn't very popular but god damn it it was a lot of fun i swear to god it dude. was fast it was fun dominion's pretty fun it's fast dude it's, uh, it's dominion fun. i didn't think about dominion dominion was awesome dominion it's fast it was basically like capture the flag or king of a hill game mode where you Shit. had five different relics that you had to capture and i love the man get even more points so if you had all five the game would end very quickly if the enemy team didn't grab one and then let's say for instance if you have the same amount of relics the game will be at a standstill because the points will go up you have to get more relics than your enemy and the game was only around 15 minutes long maybe 20 minutes it could go longer depending on how competitive it was and some of the most notable champions in this game mode were anyone that was fast such as Hecarim and Ramus, or anyone with a global uh, travel ability such as Twisted Fate or Pantheon. Also the Dominion map was used to play hide and seek which was a custom game mode that a lot of people enjoyed back in the day. And that's the end of this video guys. Thank you for watching Dude. guys. Uh, especially for this video it took a lot of time for me to actually finish it. So if you guys really do enjoy it make sure oh, you drop dude. a like. Oh I enjoyed so much. Oh, thank you for the nostalgia trip, man. Oh, man. That guy just... That guy just changed everything for me. And he was not on 1,000 subscribers. And he released a video three days ago. And now he's on 2,000... Almost 2,000 subscribers. Congrats, man. Well deserved. You, you brought the kid in me again. Oh, man. Oh, man. Now let's go back to WoW.